Me having sickle cell has isolated me from so many things. I dealt with stigma. I was afraid. I was scared. I was ashamed. I was ashamed because I didn't want people to know that part of me and to think of me as not normal. I hid it for 37 years and I had a major crisis. At that time, I thought I could do by myself. I, I don't need anybody, but I do. My name is Hazel. I am 32 years old. I suffer with sickle cell SS. I do freelance event management, but I also do patient advocacy, working with hospitals to help them understand what it's like to have sickle cell so that they can understand how patients suffer and how to engage patients. You've arrived at your destination. Just because I have sickle cell, it doesn't mean that my sickle cell controls me. I just want us as a community to be heard, to be seen. Hello. Now I feel really underdressed. I feel really underdressed now, like too casual. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Morning, son. to explain to them, oh, I've done it, I did it, and this is the outcome. They'll be able to believe you and yeah. trust you. Because right now, every sickle cell person needs somebody to trust. This is going to be fun. Mm. OK, so. Which way are we going? It, like, I can't... Guys, I struggle to read maps at the best of times, so... So we need to go down. I think, like, getting the results to see what I, what my DNA actually says mm. will be pretty cool. Like, that puts me at ease to know, like, the whole science behind it and so. stuff. Mm. I just hope that it makes processes, like, that, like, the ones that they're trying to do, like, making it easier for blood transfusions and stuff. So. Hollindale. What exactly do they do here? So it's where they store a lot of the blood, from my understanding. So then um, we're, we're meeting Colin, who has been in the service for like 30 odd 30 years. Odd yeah. years. And yeah. then the creator of this whole DNA process, Nick, Yeah. which is going to be quite exciting. I've got loads of questions. So. Are you talking about the blood that we use for transfusion? Yeah, so... Blood the exchange, they all come to this building? They they come from this building, they're wow. stored here. At least it's nearly time to actually meet, like, meet Nick. Good afternoon. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 How's it going? How's it going? Hello. 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 I'm, I'm Hazel. Oh, hello, Hazel. I'm nice Colin. Nice to meet from. you. Hi, Hazel. Jason. Nice to meet you. Hi, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jason. How's it going? Right? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> so, so we finally still... meet yeah. the people behind the DNA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually yeah. really exciting. I, did, I didn't know what to expect, but I wasn't expecting, like, you guys to be so, like, chilled. Oh, really? Like, I was expecting, like, proper white lab coats, oh, yeah, everything, yeah. like, the whole thing. Oh, no, yeah, we're really relaxed. We're I'm quite nervous to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really nervous. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. With sickle cell, when you have crisis, the first major thing is to flush out the sickle blood and replace it with the normal blood. So that's why we need 
uh, transfusion or blood exchange in our lifetime. I used to be fine with transfusions. Like, I had loads of transfusions when I was a kid. But then, like, recently, they didn't work. Like, I kept creating antibodies every time, like, I was having blood. I felt so lethargic, so tired. Mm. Um, and literally just aches and pains, just no, just pure non-energy, as if not, nothing had worked. When you expect to have a transfusion that makes you a human again, with loads of energy and that kind of thing, and sometimes you go back into crisis, and that's very, very difficult. Yeah. And when I'm talking about crisis, um, the antibodies that we didn't factor in before comes into play. So that's why I'm here today to see Colin and see the project that is going to make this much, much better for the sickle cell community, for the thalassemia community, for the blood community. Especially when you're having lots and lots of transfusions. And before you said, oh, is it my body rejecting the, the yeah. transfusion? It's because if you're just matched with an OPOS who's probably not from the same ethnic heritage as you, there may be some other differences in those blood groups. And if you do it a lot of times, you make antibodies to those differences. Mm. So it's better if you get blood from someone who's of a similar heritage than you because it's more likely to be a better match and you're less likely to make antibodies. That's why we're trying to get the matching better. And this is where Nick comes in. We do some of the testing, but some of the algorithms and other things that we need to, to do to work out the best matches on Nick's, Nick's been involved. Yeah, yeah, so I'm Nick. Um, so I work at the University of Cambridge, but I'm... I think if you take sickle cell patients, for example, they're in an extreme amount of pain. They need that blood to survive. They need it to not go into sickle cell crisis when they have one of the side effects, which is when their immune system becomes primed against a particular blood group then we start matching for them. Wouldn't it be better to give them the best match wherever possible up front so that they don't have to deal with it? Where I tend to work, but it's not just in the UK either that this research is mm. like you're meeting me and Colin, okay. but behind us is the Blood Transfusion Genomics Consortium. So actually like 14 countries' blood services signed wow. up and committed samples to the validation of this test so we can, gave us samples so we can trial it and make it really international. See, that's the Just dream, like, that's what you want to hear. Like, you want to hear that, <laughs> like, promise. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 14. loads of people are getting involved. That's <laughs> what you want. Just open the case. Yeah, and then the rest is hemoglobin. What does this mean for patients? This means that if you have a rare set of blood groups or you've had antibodies because of previous transfusion reactions, then the chance of finding you a donor for your blood transfusion is much greater. Hopefully one day we won't need blood for anyone, but in the meantime, that's what we've got, so let's just do it better. This is the thing, it's like, it's not that I don't want to have blood transfusions, because blood transfusions are like the grade A support for sickle cell patients. Like, they just weren't as effective as they should be. So, like, hopefully with this project, it'll be fine. Like, you know, I won't have that fear of going into hospital needing a blood transfusion and then, like, the blood transfusion just doesn't work, doesn't so. Work. I didn't think I'd get one, so I'm like quite excited now that I've got one. Oh, this is cool. I love this. I've always wanted to work in a lab. You know what I mean? Like, I'd love to do this as a day job. 60 days, is it? 60 days, yeah. So in the in circulation, it's about 10 days. 10 days. So we only have platelets on the shelf for seven days. Okay. Once we've taken out, we only keep them for seven days, yeah. It's actually kind of amazing. So there's 800,000 spots. Oh my in there god! That's light. like we know which one, where each one of them is. Is that how you imagined it would? No. Kind of really? <laughs> <laughs> this is actually mind blowing. Like we were saying, how react, like how many reactions that we get. Mm. It's it's nice to know that potentially in the future that these could actually be limited. In the lab, like, do you understand how the test is working, or like, yeah. what are your main questions? I guess there's something we could chat about. You can't do this alone. It takes a village to like get us back on our feet, and it's going to be so key for a lot of patients when they're finally able to like match the correct blood type. Yeah, it looks 
it's incredible because you've gone from like having 16% of the information that you need to then having 98% of the information that you need, which is a lot. It's really hopeful to know that there's like research that is ongoing and like you and Colin are a part of that. That's the main hope for like sickle cell communities because where you come from having very limited amounts of treatments for you to then hearing about all these researches is great. Now that I've seen you, I know you and I've heard about yeah. everything. I, at the back of my mind, I know that, you know what, somebody's out there yeah. doing something great. Yeah, you're, you're like I, doing I need to pass on that baton. Yeah. You know. Like, meeting you has actually given us, like, a lot more confidence in everything mm -hmm. because we get to speak to you and, like, know who you are rather than just knowing that this is the test that's coming out. The Blood Group Genotyping Test is now available from NHS England for patients with sickle cell disorder, thalassemia and other rare inherited anemias. We needed this project 10 years ago. Oh, 100%. We've needed yeah. this for a long so, time. So it's, it's great that we finally we finally have like a nick yeah, and a call in to... A new hope, a new horizon yeah, for, exactly. for us. Something to smile after those pains. If you are a patient with one of these conditions, speak to your hospital doctor or nurse for more information about the blood group genotyping test and how to get this test performed for you. For more information on the blood group genotyping test, please visit NHS Blood and Transplant. To find your local NHS England providers specialised in haemoglobin disorders, please visit NHS England Specialised Haemoglobinopathy Services. More information about sickle cell disease is available from the Sickle Cell Society. More information about thalassemia is available from the UK Thalassemia Society. With support from NHS England, the blood group genotyping test is being made available to all patients with sickle cell disease thalassemia and other transfusion dependent inherited anemias through NHS blood and transplant. The test was developed by the Blood Transfusion Genomics Consortium. The consortium is a collaborative group of experts in transfusion medicine, array DNA genotyping and computer science from around the world, working alongside doctors and nurses responsible for looking after patients with sickle cell disorder, thalassemia and other inherited anemias.